SRL were very keen uh, to see that the temporary signals change from being what's classed as dumb units, as in standalone fixed time units, making them more intelligent and being capable to uh, align and, and tie in with other city management systems and become part of the, the whole city strategy. So the thing you're showing off here that I'm looking at is the Urban 64 solution. Tell me about that. Yeah, Urban 64 is a solution that's used generally during construction, either refurbishment of an existing uh, traffic signal site or where a major road is being realigned or being constructed and there's live traffic travelling on it. Um, to put an Urban 64 on site, you deploy that and then you can leave, uh, leave that running uh, with the overhead cables and there's nothing in the ground for anyone to do any damage obviously uh, safety from uh, electricity to 140 volts takes all that away everything's moved over ground and allows construction workers uh, earth moving equipment diggers to dig safely once it's all been checked out so it moves that uh, problem yeah i've seen those out on the road a couple of installations and thought about the fact that you've got the uh, cables slung very high in the air and it didn't occur to me that of course that removes any risk of anybody digging through a cable and not only taking the system out but also potentially causing themselves a lot of harm yeah yeah the, it's one of the things that a lot of people like to move away from overhead cables but during construction sites um, above seven meters height is, is classed as being a safe area so our uh, urban 64 system the poles go up seven meters the traffic signals go at standard height but the poles are seven meters so the cables are slung catenary wires are put across and the cables uh, tied across and the cables that go across are 48 volts on a typical LV traffic signal site is 240 volt, which is in the ground. You want all that isolated before MD starts working there. Obviously, the more modern systems are extra low voltage, 48 volt. Um, but again, if you want to use existing duct systems and networks, you have to pull the old cables out, put the new ones in, and trying to use that while you're doing construction is very difficult. And Urban 64 is a connected solution. How do you connect back to a control centre? Yeah, Urban 64, as it says, is, it, it can do up to 64 heads. The actual control the control unit um, can connect back into urban traffic management control systems using the chameleon, which is the Danique now Swarco chameleon unit, um, which it takes its UTMC interface and communicates straight using UG405 back into the central city system. Now we're also standing next to uh, this uh, signal unit. Now this one, it looks like it's completely standalone. So uh, how is this powered? Because this doesn't have any uh, connection to the grid. Yeah, this unit is this is a portable unit. It's on wheels. You can move it around site. This is powered by battery. At the moment, we're using lead acid batteries. We're looking into new technology, uh, gel batteries lithium batteries, runs with three 12 volt batteries, similar to you get in a car or a, lo a lorry, uh, 12 volts and three of those will last a week. One of the things we're working on at the moment is trying to reduce the number of changes, at the moment we have to change batteries once a week, um, so what we want to try and do is lengthen that by looking at solar uh, to keep the batteries charged up a bit longer. It's interesting, so you're, you've got a solution that works, but you're not kind of resting on your laurels and just leaving it as it works, you're constantly looking to improve. Correct. Uh, in my opinion, if you're standing still, you're, you're moving backwards because your competition are moving forward. So at SRL, with our uh, technical innovation centre, we're always looking at new things, looking at what we can do and keep um, being innovative and, and moving things along. And that innovation centre is actually in the same city as we are now in Nottingham. It is, yeah, it's just based out of Beeston, uh, very close to the railway station there and it's great coming along here today to uh, the symposium at Nottingham Uni Trent University and you know, being the, the, the town, the city that uh, we actually operate and do our innovation in. You also mentioned uh, Swarco, who of course bought Dinic. Um, how important is collaboration in the industry that you're not just SRL standalone providing solutions, but you're working with other companies to be able to deliver end-to-end -end solutions? Yep. Yeah, yeah, SRL made a decision when they started looking to get into the mobile variable message market uh, to partner with um, Swarco. So SRL now purchased over 450 um, Swarco variable message signs on trailers that we move around the country, put them out on hire and uh, as well as in the UK over in Ireland as well. And it's, it's a great collaborative arrange, arrangement we've got with Swarco. They concentrate on the permanent market and national highways. We 
put our stuff out in national highways during construction of new schemes um, and they come back off again but the system that pulls all the uh, the SWARCO signs together on permanent networks can be used on the temporary signs as well and it gives the, the clients an ability to change messages and control the signs, switch them on and off or change the messages um, dy dynamically.